Okay, welcome back. I can thank you for those who come stay with me. Okay. Yeah, I think there is some some people. Right. Yeah, I take the advice of your teachers. I think uh, the next half I will talk about more on the device side. I hope that will be helpful. So this I I will quickly go through the scaling, but I will just to say why we start to work on the non-destructive readout and the fair electric FET stand for field effect transistor. I assume all of you here who on the electrical side know what FET is. And uh, as I explained in the last time, one of the things here we work on is we try to not disturb or change the data stored in the memory cell. But because of the ways we access the charge information, we have to change it. That's make it a destructive readout. So because of that, we want to find a way to do non-destructive readout which will be more straightforward for the circuit design and also for the benefit of the device reliability. So I'll cover this areas with normal FM cell quickly moving into the FFET and for the different schemes and how the testing or reliability we have done. So this is just a slide to repeat what we have done last time. And in the previous hour, I explained what is the DRAM with one transistor, one capacitor as a basic memory cell for the DRAM memory. And we explained how to write the information to charge this capacitor or discharge this capacitor as a bit of one and zero. We also explain how we read this information by switching on this transistor, let the charger to charge the bit line here. The charge can come out here. So detect the bit line, which is the floating at high voltage or low voltage, we detect the information is stored in the DRAM. And we also explain it very briefly say if we have the one transistor, one capacitor configuration for the fair electric random access memory, we can do all the same except that we use another line to switch this polarization on one and zero different directions to use two levels of voltage supply. And we gain the advantage of the Polarization state there is stable, so the information we stored is non-volatile. But what happens if we make these things and all the users, the customers, want more and more added memory capacity? Because I think if you look at the history of you using computers, Maybe five years ago, if you have a one gigabit memory or even 500 megabit memory, you think that's a, a reasonable computer. Now you say, no, 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 I don't want it. I want a two gigabit or four gigabit, yeah? So every year, they have a push for the high density of the things. But what will happen if we take this route on fair electric capacitor route to make the arch-large scale integrated circuit. We come from the constraints. The constraints are two folds. One is the physical constraint. Because the polarization itself is a material property, you cannot increase too much. So what you can do is you detect the charge and the larger area you got the larger charge you got. The larger charge you got, the easier you can separate this uh, bit one or bit zero. However, 
if you want to make this smaller, this will be having a problem. That's one side of the problem. Another side of the problem is this. Because the larger the scale you make, the lower the operating voltage is. Which means you want to make the film thinner and thinner. When you make the film thinner and thinner, there are many problems comes, leakage, current, and the material will start to behave differently. So that's on the intrinsic side. And there's leakage current and intrinsic switch in time. So I'm not getting into all of that. But I also want to mention is there's another side is even you got the material, you can do the job, and that how you will do it. You will have to develop the lithography for this particular type of material. You have to control.